as my be now. Look at this beauty. Anytime a man shows up wearing this hat, he's got stories to tell. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to Marshall's Tomatoes. Listen, we, uh, for years now, have wound down our season with a preserve shoot for upland birds, pheasants, quail, chuckers, that type of deal. We're out here with uh, Thunder Hills Quail Hunts today. He's got a bunch of pheasants that he's brought in for us, gonna put a few quail out in the field for us as well. I know it's a preserve shoot and it's not everybody's cup of tea, but man, let me tell you, if you've not done it, it is a great way to wind down the season. We're uh, middle of February. Our duck season is over, our deer season is over. We're pretty much wound down with everything. Um, so we come out here, blow off a little bit of steam, burn a little more gunpowder, just kind of bring it all together. Now, guys, this is a great time. You, you really need to, to be involved in this at one point or another, just to see what it's all about. We come out here normally with a bunch of kids. The kids couldn't make it this time, everybody's in school. But we, we get out here, just have fun, shoot a bunch of shells and have a lot of fun. So come on along, get in the truck and come ride with us. We'll see you back in a bit. I've hunted with these guys here before. And Mr. Bill, he has some spectacular dogs. These dogs are really, really nice animals. Y'all are gonna love it. We're gonna have a good time. I'm trying to shoot it in the head. <laughs> I'm not trying to shoot it in the head anymore. Shoot that bird. Whoa, head! Whoa! Yeah, he hit the ground running though. Oh, yours. Okay, wait, wait now. So y'all do have BBs flying out of your guns. <laughs> That's hey, I've shot once before then. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, I just, I didn't know if there were BBs coming out of y'all barrel. Well, that one worked. It didn't kill us. I'm not sure about mine. Finally, guys, I hope we got it on film because this was the first shot between the two of them that they actually had loaded shells, I think. It was my second <laughs> shot, by the way. <laughs> Here you go, Mr. Bill. Thank you, sir. One of the gifts of doing a preserve hunt is that you meet interesting people like Squeaky here. Now I guarantee you, anytime a man shows up wearing this hat, he's got stories to tell. <laughs> you just spend a little bit of time, man's got this hat with a turkey feather sticking out, 
let him walk through the field with you just for a little bit. He's going <laughs> to tell you something. Guarantee it. Might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the truth, but he's going to tell you something. And how old are you, Sweetie? 76. 76 years old, still yes. out here chasing birds. Love it. Every minute of it, I love it. That's awesome, man. That is. Uh, that's that's an incredible story just to be able to tell that at this point in your life that man I, I still get up and get out every day and do what I love and chasing those bird dogs when I'm 76 I'm gonna be lucky to still be able to chase a cup of coffee I believe <laughs> I chased one on the, on the way over here and I had a had I some... caught one on the way here can you believe that I caught a cup of hey, coffee did you? yeah <laughs> I'm not real fast, but I can outrun a cup of coffee. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, you're doing pretty good with these birds. Now, they can't outrun you, that's for sure. No, no. See, I've, I've got an accelerator. Yes, sir. The, this one right here goes a lot faster than a bird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the preserve hunt, is it's not for everybody. No. A lot of people poo-poo it, and they don't, they don't support the idea. But it is a great way for people to just get out, do something easy that's enjoyable. Don't have to drive to Kansas to do it. That's right. right. And that's right. which, I mean, I, I did. I went to Kansas twice this year and um, love to go. Love yep. to go and shoot the wild birds. I, I love it. It's it's my passion. But when I can finish out the season, something like this, I can bring my brother, bring my son. Sometimes my dad comes along with us. Um, I, I love it. I love just getting out here and finish my season like this. Mm -hmm. So guys down here in Mississippi, we've got a lot of row planted pines. One of the biggest economies down here is the, the harvest of the pines for lumber. So Mr. Bill, who is the, uh, the head guy on our hunt today, has come and put some of these pheasants out in the pines for us. At our request, we, we like to step it up a little bit, make it a little more challenging than just shooting them flying against the blue sky. So we're gonna head into these trees and see what the dogs can do in here. And, See if we can actually put the gun on some of them. All right, everybody, so uh, spent the morning out chasing these birds. Had a great time. Probably shot, I don't know, 20, 25 birds this morning. Sat down, great lunch, man. They grilled some steaks out for us, good baked potatoes. Really good lunch. Everybody had a good time. A lot of fellowship, good blessing before the meal. 
just a really good, wholesome experience this morning. And, and I tell you, if the day ended today, right now, perfect, no complaints. We would be absolutely delighted with what we've had so far. But here we are, back after lunch, doing exactly what we did this morning. We're gonna be chasing pheasants. We're gonna chase them down through the pines. We're gonna chase them in the open fields. We're also gonna chase some quail this evening. Again, guys, preserve hunts are not for everybody, but if you have not experienced it, you do yourself a favor. Go out here, find a quality preserve where there are quality people doing quality hunts. This is a great experience. Let's see how it goes. Come on. Finishing the day out with some small birds. Man, you guys watch the end of the video. We're gonna show you how to prepare these things. They will knock your socks off. Let's see if we can get a couple more.
<laughs> you did all right today. I mean, not as good as the old man, but you did all right. <laughs> well, everybody, we had a really, really long day here chasing birds. It's been an incredible event today. Shot a ton of birds, some very beautiful birds. These birds are going to do us a lot of favors when they get to the table, too. So we're definitely looking forward to that. You guys stick around to the end of the video. and We're going to show you how to, you know, process these birds and then how to put them as good, suitable table fare. You guys have to come down here and, and, and give these guys at Thunder Hill a, a, a try. It's, it's just an incredible experience. Anybody can do this. It, they will accommodate you in any way that you need. If you need to be in a mule that they drive you from, from place to place to get behind a good, strong pointed dog, they will accommodate you in that manner. They will put great birds in front of you. Every bird that we had today flew like a wild bird. And I, I know it's hard to believe, but I can tell you these are the best flying birds I've ever seen. This was an incredible experience today. We shot a ton of birds, a ton of shells, spent a lot of time out here walking through these woods. You gotta come down here and give these guys a chance. Really good experience. All right, everybody, so we just got back from Mississippi. Went on the end of the season pheasant and quail preserve hunt like we've been doing for several years. We've got some of these really nice quail. Showed them to y'all when we first harvested the birds. Told you I'd show you how to cook them. Well, we took our time. We plucked these birds. We didn't just breast them out. But here's what we do. We start here, cut the spine out, okay? So just cut the entirety of it out. Get your shears, a good pair of game shears. So, this bird is clean. And he's cut in half, okay? Now, we just take them, dump them in some flour. Let me get a couple of them in there to show you. Again, we just cut the spine right out of this bird. I'll break him down a little bit. Eat some waste inside of him. Throw these in the flour. Okay, so now we just kind of flour them up. This is not seasoned. This is just kind of a pre-coat. We're gonna flour these things, get them all coated real well, and then we're gonna set them in the refrigerator for about an hour. Now we're gonna get this whole pan done, we'll set them in the refrigerator, we'll come back here in a minute and we'll show you what we do with the next step. Okay, so these quail have been sitting in the refrigerator after we dusted them with flour for about an hour. So next step, come, we take a couple of eggs, crack them into our pan, Everybody's familiar with an egg wash. I'm just gonna show you the way we do it. A little bit of egg, a little milk, just enough that we can get these birds to get coated good. A little bit of mustard, nothing fancy. So, get your fork. Now, you can get your quail, shake off the extra flour, kind of lay them in here. Don't put too many in here. You don't want to cake up your egg wash too bad with the excess flour. So three or four at a time. Just get them situated in there. Now look, we had a lot of extra flour when we flour these quail. That was done by intention. We're going to utilize this extra flour to season our quail for the final step. Okay, so we get our quail, we dredge them through, make sure they're wet, all corners. Put them in this other pan. Everybody kind of has their own little recipe for this, I guess. This is just the way we do it here. Don't ever have any complaints, so no need to change it. All right, 
right, so we got them all getting good and soupy wet. All right, so we dredged all the quail. We had initially put them in the flour for a dusting, put them in the refrigerator, ran them through our egg and milk bath, and I mentioned the extra flour for when we had dusted them. So here's what we're gonna do with that. We're gonna add some panko breadcrumbs. And we're gonna add some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. This is the part that makes it. This is where your fried quail or your fried chicken strips are gonna be different than your neighbors. Then we're gonna add a little bit of our Marsh's tomatoes, all-purpose seasoning. Just add this in here now. Typically with our fried fish and stuff, we add this after we fry it. But for this type of frying a chicken or a country fried steak or something of that nature where you're gonna do a slow fry, we add it now. So just get all your ingredients mixed real well. Get that Parmesan cheese spread evenly throughout there. Your panko breadcrumbs, you can kind of get a feel for it with your fingers. It's a little more coarse, obviously, than just the flour. Now, got all your stuff in there. Get your quail. A lot of people want to do these one at a time. I just kind of throw all of them in here and roll them around, get them all dusted real good. Just make sure all of your moist surfaces get coated evenly. You don't want it caked up in some areas and absent in other areas. All right, so we got all these quail all dusted with the Parmesan cheese and other mix that you guys saw. So we just come out, set them in our grease that was preheating. Now you're doing this on a relatively low heat. You want this to be a lower heat than what you would have used for you know, frying fish or frying shrimp or something of that nature because these things have got to cook a little slow. Now you want the crust on the outside to be able to get crisp, but you don't want to go so fast that you burn the crust and don't get the middle of the meat cooked. All right, so they're nice and light and crispy. They're all floating, they're done. Let's take them out. Let them drain on some paper towels for a little while. Let that grease settle. Let the meat kind of get back together and the juices of the bird to get back into the meat. All right, everybody, so we got the quail out of the grease, put them in this tray to drain, brought them in and let them cool. Let the juices seep back into the meat. This bird is a delicate bird. You can just look, cooked it on a low heat in the grease and the legs just fall right off. These are excellent table fare. Taste the salty from the Parmesan. The nice crispy crunch from the panko. We've got a little bit of heat with our um, all-purpose seasoning. This is, this is excellent table fare. Thank you guys for watching.